Hey everybody, happy Saturday. This is weird. Back to back and we had some technical problems, but I want to jump in and talk about this is probably one of the most important things I think everybody should know. And nobody is interested in learning about security or locking down their computers and stuff. But in the community we have, we are on the receiving end every week of at least five to ten people who made a mistake lost their crypto, got hacked, got drained, had a fake girlfriend or boyfriend, fake exchange, fake link. It, the, the sky is the limit. So we've put together, myself and Dr. Watson, big thank you to all the help from him. We put together a matrix of threat vectors that you can all use. And coincidentally as well, I too was impacted by a hack. Let me see which card is it. One of my credit cards was abused. This one. And um, <laughs> it was used. We don't know how. And this is why uh, the earlier video, I had to take it upstairs because the downstairs one didn't work because it requires surf software that runs off that credit card. And I'm like, well, why is the software not working? I thought it had a technical problem. So I had to go do it upstairs and just shoot a rough impromptu video. So hacking security impacts us all. And whether you have crypto or not, this is a must see video. Again, let's just jump in. We try to make it as simple as possible and uh, let's go. So the video is how to prevent hacks. Let's talk about math, money, freedom and security. So a few days ago, I put the link here, somewhere here uh, for this video. These are the five crypto wallets you need for all the five things you need to do for this new world, new use case where certain authoritarian governments can shut you down. This is the type of stuff, the type of wallets you need to be able to survive in this future world over the next 10, 15, 20 years. So, and in addition to that, we promised you best practices. We dropped a, a suggestion box. Do you want to hear about best practices that can lock these wallets down? So we did that. So this also is a little bit wordier than normal because we want people who have maybe not have English as a foreign language, want to be able to take notes, see all the description, and go through it slowly because it's too much important stuff here to go. So first of all, the threat model. What we do is we created this model to help defend your crypto and your bank account and your credit cards, etc., against attacks. So the model is used to identify vulnerabilities and then prioritize and implement strategies and safeguards. Now, the purpose of the threat model is to systematically analyze the defenses you need to implement given the nature of security system and the likely ways in which it can be attacked. And please do your own threat model and ask yourself, where am I most vulnerable to attack based on our matrix? Second, what are the most relevant threats to me? And third, what can I do to safeguard against those threats? Okay, so visually what it'll look like is this. This, you will have your critical assets as we discovered in the video um, two days ago, you need five different categories of wallets to be able to act in this new modern world. Custodial wallet, mobile wallet, hardware wallet, desktop wallet, and Web3 wallet. Then you need a set of defenses that are aligned to those assets. It could also be cell phone, etc. You need to be able to back up everything, harden your devices, harden your account, and improve yourself. We'll walk through all of that as well. And we'll cover it across all the threats phishing attacks, SIM swap, malware, viruses, targeted hacks, physical attacks, $5 wrench attack, yourself. We'll talk more about yourself out there too. And of course, system failure. That's gonna be the structure. We'll get through this in about 15 minutes, not a lot. So first of all, this is our risk matrix. And we organize things across, again, the five different wallets across the top, your custodial mobile hardware, desktop, and web three, across the different threats your phishing attack, SIM swap, malware, targeted hack, physical attack, wrench yourself and system failure. And we organized it by the severity of the threat and the frequency of the threat as well. And we put that into a whole scoring system, which will come towards the very end. And we'll show you exactly based on what type of wallet you have, what you need to be most concerned about. We emphasize go after the high danger areas first at the most highest uh, frequency and then solve those part problems first and then trickle down to deal with everything. So hopefully within a week or two, you'll have everything tied up, 
everything hardened, and that's critical for this future. So first, we're going to talk about phishing attacks. Real threat. It is the most common type of attack. It fools people every day. We have people calling into us saying, oh, I got phished. I didn't even know what phishing was and everything else. So it involves a hacker trying to download malicious software or persuading you to send your crypto to an address controlled by them. Again, it could be fake videos. It could be, oh, send me one Ethereum, I'll send you two back. Or send me half a Bitcoin, I'll send you a full one back. People, intelligent people, every single day get fooled by this. And I don't know what it is, because if it was traditional world, you met a guy in the street here, uh, give me a bag of money and I'll give you back two bags. People would say, you're crazy. But in the crypto world, they fall for it. And we don't know why. Now, the mitigation tactics, are, first of all, I always say this, everybody always should know this. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Second, do not ever open emails you don't recognize. I don't even read text messages. I don't answer my phone. I don't look at email. I have somebody do all that for me. Be very, very careful, okay? It's extremely dangerous. Third, watch out for fake websites. Always verify that the website you are on is intended to go to the URL. Look for funny URLs. Look for things like .io. Uh, they can be very suspicious a lot of the time. And if you are unsure about an email, check the actual sender's email address. Hover over it and make sure it has the actual URL of the company you can trust. Maybe pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, did you email me? Again, people get fake Bank of America, fake Wells Fargo, fake Barclays, fake Chase all the time and whatever happens in Europe as well. It is incredible. So next thing, number two, and this happens to people a lot, believe it or not, it is the SIM swap threat. So uh, first of all, for those who aren't familiar, this is all about what they call social engineering, where you convince somebody to do something. So for example, an attacker calls target's mobile provider and requests that the target mobile number is transferred. And the number is transferred to a new SIM card the attacker tries to access Target's account, either using stolen credentials, etc., requesting a password reset. They do the 2FA code sent via SMS, and then the Target drains people's accounts. It is uncanny, uncanny how many times this has happened to people with Coinbase accounts. We, we, we are on the receiving end of this all the time. So please, what you do to prevent this is put a pin on your cell phone, Use a carrier that only allows in-store swaps of SIMs or call them up and make sure that they don't allow anything to happen over the phone. Uh, use a YubiKey or a 2FA that's outside of the cell phone. Don't use your cell phone number and use all the usual stuff like facial recognition um, because this social engineering is proven highly effective. You know, there's some people probably in call centers are getting paid minimum wage. They hate their jobs and they're saying, like, okay, here you go, yeah. I'll give you what you need, just get off the line. So be careful, everybody. This is extremely common and uh, watch out for it. Easy way to fix it. Number three is malware and viruses. So software intentionally is designed to cause disruption to a computer device and steal your credentials, private info. For example, your password to your exchange, your phrase to your Web3 wallet or desktop wallet. And your computer is the most vulnerable um, even though smartphone and hardware wallet can be as well. Now the mitigation strategies, real simple, use your antivirus software or firewalls or use a Mac. Uh, use a dedicated machine, we spoke about this before, a dedicated machine for crypto trading and only trusted sites in this machine. Don't let loved ones or kids play with this machine. Lock it down, it has one purpose only. And applying regular patches, keep the firmware up to date. And remember, uh, also, an error gap means slow, but probability that the firmware is real as you go forward. So that is the malware and viruses. Now, next one is a targeted hack. Now, this is an attack where hackers target you to break into your device through brute force, tampering, snooping, social engineering. Again, mitig mitigating tactics are be vigilant of what information you share update the latest firmware, limit the number of apps you install on your devices, or in fact, just don't, and get your hardware from the manufacturer and download software from trusted sites. That includes things like keys. Don't buy a um, 
a, a Trezor from eBay or Craigslist or something like that, buy it directly from the manufacturer. Very important because there are so many that have been hacked and modified to steal all your crypto. Now, next one is physical attacks. So the this is where the hacker gains access to your home, your router, your computer, and or your hardware wallet device. Check our video. I'll put a link up here at the top 20 simple mitigation techniques of how you can lock down your router at your home and stuff like that. Very important. A hacker takes apart your device or your hardware wallet and re-engineers it. That's why you have to buy it directly from a source. There's also a thing called a rubber ducky attack. Uh, somebody puts a key logger on your computer to get your password. And mitigation tactics, again, dedicated computer for cryptos and encrypt sensitive data. Know your computer, be aware of your ports and know what is physically connected to your device. Always look at the back. Um, lock down your router, strong password, place in a secure location and keep your wallet and your seed backups in hidden and secure places. Again, you can see a lot of this is very repetitive, you know, separate computer, etc. So this is very, very important. Now, this one is the what they call the five dollar wrench attack. Uh, unfortunately, this happened actually quite frequently in places like Europe and the Netherlands and stuff. So the first rule of Bitcoin, it sounds like the first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Bitcoin or what you have or crypto, whatever crypto you have. Keep it very, very quiet. OK, now when we jump into this here, it is the crudest attack. The tech user uses violence to force you to give up your, on your crypto. There are stories of sons drugging their fathers and beating people to a pulp and threatening other loved ones. It is shocking, but this is what happens now. There are mitigation tactics. Your home security have alarms, uh, safety locks, safe rooms, that type of stuff. Remain anonymous. Don't talk. Don't expose your location. Don't leave your wallet lying around. Use multiple devices and wallets. Keep backups in different locations and use multi-sig and most importantly, the duress pin feature. A duress pin is simply that it's if for whatever reason you're in a bad situation where someone is forcing you to unlock your database, you can enter a different pin than the correct one and the strong box will perform some kind of plausible action, but not reveal your password secrets. Very, very important. So make sure you have that. Most uh, good assets have that as a feature. Next one, most important one, believe it or not, is yourself. Half of the... Uh, mistakes that come in uh, from the community here are people who made a mistake, for example, wrong address, etc. But your number one security risk is yourself. You can compromise your security by not using a device properly. You can forget your passwords, lose your seed phrase, forget where you stored your seed, and not planning for death or a traumatic brain injury or a serious illness. All of these things can really put a wrinkle in your plans and your ability to leave crypto to loved ones. Now, your mitigation tactics are having backups and making a note where you stored them. You can write it in code. You practice, practice, practice. Use your device. Restore your seed, etc. Get familiar. Don't do it when it's a rainy day. Be aware of how to do it. Very important. Always double check the address you're sending crypto before sending. Send a tiny bit first. Verify it's received. And multi-sig at a, or at a minimum educate your loved ones on how to restore your seed very very critical write all these steps down follow them religiously next uh, the threat of a system failure again when your device fails it could be age sometimes hardware devices last five to seven years um it could be bugs it could cause a loss of data uh, there are examples of fire flood earthquakes war kids playing with stuff smashing stuff who knows dogs eating things, <laughs> anything is possible. But sometimes the hardware or software can become defective over time. So mitigating strategies is your seeds, seeds, seeds. Write them down, store them in a safe place. That is your backup. And have backup devices where you can restore your seeds to and practice recovering your seeds and show your loved ones how to restore your seeds. Very, very important. And let's get to the fun part. Let's score all this up and help you guys focus on where you need to focus first. Here's the math. So we scored all of the type of wallets against the different type of attacks that are most frequent. And you can see here per our scoring matrix, you yourself, that big red line, second from the bottom, scores an 8.9. That can be the problem for both custodial wallets, mobile wallets, hardware, desktop, Web3. You are the number one risk vector, believe it or not. 
Number two is the phishing attack. And that has most impact on things like custodial wallets and also Web3. Be very, very careful with that too. Again, follow our mitigation strategies. Number three is system failure. Believe it or not, things break. Have a backup. Have the seed stored safely. And you can go down the list. Malware, viruses, uh, physical attacks. The $5 wrench, thank goodness, is the second most rare, second most least thing you have to worry about. But uh, as the future goes forward, perhaps as the price of Bitcoin becomes more valuable, that could, could become more common. And the SIM swap, again, impacts custodial accounts, Coinbase accounts, but not as frequently as you'd imagine. But we've heard heartbreaking stories of people losing half a million dollars, hundred thousand dollars life savings like that. Simple phishing attack. Oh, my cell phone's not working. Mm, what's going on? Half an hour later, account drained. So be careful. Make sure all these simple, simple, simple strategies to lock your stuff down. Now, quick summary of best practices for everybody out there. General best practice. First of all, back up everything. Back up your keys, seed phrases, passwords. Store your seeds in a safe place that you and your loved ones know and can remember. And number three, have backup devices. So if you lose your device, you can restore it. Again, practice, have a plan. This is important, especially over the next eight to 10 years as some of these assets could become extremely valuable. Second, harden, harden, harden your devices. Use a dedicated computer for handling crypto. I'm sorry for being so repetitive, but this is too important. Encrypt sensitive data. Update to the latest firmware frequently. Keep device clear of malware. Limit the number of apps installed in your hardware wallet. Very important. If you crowd them too much, it can cause all sorts of problems. And use wallets that have open sourced firmware as much as possible and lock down your router strong passwords and a place in a secure location again we recommend 15 character passwords big long complex beasts third harden your accounts use 2fa yubikey 2fa on all accounts your gmail your ftx your coinbase and have only one or two keys have a backup key as well in case you lose one uh, use a strong password 15 characters as i mentioned and use a dedicated computer to access your crypto accounts I probably said that four times, dedicated computer, dedicated computer, dedicated computer. It could even be an old one. Um, these exchanges don't require a lot of horsepower. Number four, sharpen your skills, improve yourself every day, develop your own threat model and system. Don't trust your memory, write it down and practice, 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 recovering your seed, sending crypto, practice using Web3 wallets, practice using DEXs, all very important. And do not click on links you're not familiar with, check the URL and know that what to do if you are hacked and trust your instinct. If something smells fishy, it is. If something sounds too good to be true, it is. Be paranoid. And remember, scammers are everywhere. My security is locked down. Somehow somebody got my card. No idea how. And it's only used for very specific expenses. So uh, check out this video as well. Uh, learn how the hackers steal your crypto. Good to be aware of that too. You can see we're very focused. This challenge is about math, money, and freedom, but it's also about risk mitigation and asset protection. Again, we've seen people build up assets over a whole work lifetime, 30 years, and lose everything in 30 minutes. So don't let that happen to you all. And remember, the biggest risk is yourself <laughs> per our models. So um, be aware of that. Be aware of where the risk lies. Thank you, everybody. Hope you like this content. We'll see you tomorrow for the weekly Q&A. And a big thank you again to Dr. Watson for helping me put the, all this stuff together. See you all. Bye.